It's been thought that you should never ever combine cardio along with your weight training. And the reason that that's generally thought is because when you do cardio, you pull performance away from your weight training, which would imply that if you're not able to weight train at your maximum ability, you're not getting the maximum body composition result. You're not getting the maximum muscle growth because you're not able to work at your max intensity. Simple example, if you go and you run for 20 minutes and then you go and squat, you won't be able to squat as much because your legs might be a little bit tired, which would imply your legs will not grow. Well, that again comes back down to sort of this uh, almost Newtonian way of looking at things, very simple physical way of looking at things. But if we actually get down to the genes, we get down to AMPK phosphorylation, then which don't worry, I'll break it down. We can actually learn that that might not be the case. So some compelling new research coming from the Journal of Applied Physiology, which we'll talk about. I promise I'll make this video simple, even though it's relatively complex, because I think you'll learn something. So we'll also talk about how far apart you should space your cardio and your weight training because you'll learn something from this as well. All right, so first, please do hit that red subscribe button and then please hit that bell icon. I really would appreciate it. It allows you to get notifications so you know whenever I post a new video, which is just about every day. And then after this video, uh, if you can, please check out Perfect Keto down below. They are a tremendous supporter of this channel. They help keep us going. They help feed our families. They help keep the team going. They're just an awesome brand and they have some really amazing deals going on on their low carb bars right now. So just go ahead and check them out down below in the description after you watch this video. Best way to support this channel, support the brands that support us. All right, so the first thing we have to talk about here is sort of the two pathways that we look at with training and uh, muscle loss and muscle growth. You see, we have the AMPK pathway, A-M-P-K. Okay, this AMPK pathway is activated when we have any kind of cellular energy depletion, whenever we are depleting energy. Example, uh, starvation or caloric restriction or aerobic cardio. Okay, we are in energy depletion mode. The opposite of AMPK is mTOR. mTOR is where we build muscle or where we grow cells or where we are just growing in energy. That is, well, you guessed it, when we are eating or in a caloric surplus or, you guessed it, resistance training. So one would argue that they are two very competing forces within the body. Well, on the surface they are, but they actually help each other to some degree. So let's talk about this Journal of Applied Physiology study, and let's get an understanding of what could be happening at a deeper level. Okay, so this study took a look at participants. Now, although it's a relatively small study, it goes deep. Okay, they did five weeks of resistance training. Okay, so two groups, five weeks of resistance training where they were working with one leg doing knee extensions. Okay, so three times per week for five weeks, they would go in and they would do knee extensions with one leg. Kind of weird. And then another group would do 40 minutes of cardio with one leg on a cycle. That sounds miserable, but I guess for science, I would do it too. So one leg of cycling cardio for 40 minutes at 70% max intensity. Then they would take a 15 minute rest and then they'd do the knee extensions. Well, no surprise, the group that did the cardio first had peak power, their power output was 10 to 20% less. Most studies end it right there. Okay, power is less in that group. That implies, simply put, they are not having as much of a result. They're not getting stronger, they're not building muscle, call it a day. Not this study, this one went deeper. Okay, so even though peak power was down, they saw that there was an obvious improvement in endurance, in the leg that ended up doing the cardio too. So that's a plus and that's kind of to be expected. But hypertrophy, muscle growth, went from 3% in the non-aerobic group to 6% in the aerobic group. So the group that did the cardio had double, yes, double the muscle growth. That's nothing to sneeze at. We're talking 2X the amount of muscle that was built, even though they weren't lifting as much weight if that doesn't rain on every old scientific research paper that I've read, I don't know what will. This is cool because it's showing that, wait a minute, when we actually look deeper, cardio could build muscle. Now, there's more. The aerobic leg had more glycogen at rest. Okay, so even though the leg actually did cardio first, after the knee extensions, it ended up with more glycogen left than the other group. Maybe this is because it wasn't able to go to full, you know, maximum ability. I don't know. Anyhow, 
For those of you that are nerdy, take that, run with it, look at it, but let's save it for another video otherwise. Now let's talk about the real fun stuff, the gene expression piece, because this is where we can nerd out, and this is where you'll learn stuff, and I promise I'm going to get to what you can apply here. I just have to get the science off my chest first before I can give you some kind of practical application. So the researchers found that there was an increase in a specific gene, so gene expression of what is called PGC1A. Okay, now PGC1A was 10.3 times higher in the aerobic group than the non-aerobic group. What is so great about this PGC1A? This PGC1A increases mitochondrial biogenesis, so that means it makes the mitochondria more dense, it makes the mitochondria more fluid, it makes the mitochondria be able to produce more, it makes you more energy efficient, which makes sense because you did cardio. But the best part about this PGC1A is that it suppresses the action of something called FOXO3, another gene pathway, that causes you to lose muscle. It's responsible for a lot of atrophy. So by doing cardio, you activate this master gene that suppresses a gene that would normally initiate the muscles to break down. Then there was a 65% decrease in myostatin in the aerobic group versus a 31% decrease. Myostatin is what uh, prevents your muscle from really growing. Okay, a good, good example is I used to see on the Discovery Channel, they used to talk about Belgian blue cows. Remember these cows that were freakishly muscular? Like they looked weird. Well, they had myostatin deficiencies or they would give them myostatin inhibition drugs that would make it so they could just build muscle to the max. So we want to inhibit myostatin in order to build muscle. So 65% in decrease in myostatin versus 31 if you did cardio first. What? Okay, let's go a little bit more in depth and make this a little bit more concrete. So yes, there was an increase in AMPK. Okay, that AMPK I talked about at the beginning of this video. Increase in AMPK indicating the body was utilizing extra energy. We saw that in the cardio group. But what they also noticed is that there was no subsequent change in P70S6K phosphorylation. There was no change in mTOR. Point with saying all of this, and the authors of this article actually said this straight up. Protein synthesis is so powerful from weight training and lasts for so long, it lasts for 72 hours, that it supersedes any small change in AMPK that you might get from cardio. So again, to put this in simple, simple terms, the power of a little bit of weight training overpowers a lot of cardio. So the general rule with that, and I'm going to get into some more details, but always, always make sure that you're doing a little bit more resistance training than you're doing cardio. Personally, from an anecdotal side, I do a lot of cardio because I enjoy it, but I also maintain muscle and people wonder why that's possible because I always make sure that I never let endurance training consume me to the point where I'm not doing heavy resistance training because the resistance training is always going to signal a DNA, a genetic process that's going to preserve the muscle that I would otherwise burn from cardio. You ever hear just the people that go into the gym and just do tons of cardio? That's what happens. Okay, now let's look at a couple quick studies that talk about how far we should really separate our cardio from our weight training. So the Journal of Strength and Conditioning first published a paper that said that ideally you want to have 24 hours between different uh, antagonist types of training, cardio versus weight training. So they're saying it takes 24 hours to recover from, say, a long run before you should go and, and weight train to get the maximal effect. Okay, then there was another paper also published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning that said that six hours is really the minimum. So six hours between your cardio and your weight training to be able to have maximal performance. So six hours between contradictory training modalities. So what that would mean is if I got up at 5 a.m. and I went for a run and I was done at 6 a.m., I wouldn't want to lift until 12 if I wanted to have maximal performance. But that doesn't necessarily apply if you're looking at muscle hypertrophy, okay? So if you're trying to get the growth, uh, muscle growth benefits or potentially the insulin resistance benefits, things like that, I think you can have them close together without much of a problem, okay? But if you're really trying to go for power and you're really trying to build the ultimate amount of muscle, tons of muscle, then you might want to separate them six hours, but it ultimately doesn't matter which one you do first. Cardio first, six hours later, weight training, or weight training first, six hours later, later do cardio, okay? I would ideally say that you're in a fasted state. We'll save that for another day. Anyhow, deep science. Please do also, again, reminder, check out Perfect Keto down below. Use that link. That way you can get your hands on a special pricing for those bars. And I'll see you tomorrow in another video.